Greetings, ladies and managers, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called An Alien Plays Factorio, written by Farm Witch 4275. Greetings and glorious victory. My name is Spillmung, and welcome to my Let's Play. Today we will be celebrating uh, the recent release of many games to the open market by humans with a game that was recommended to me by many times by my work colleague. Hats off to you, Jerry. Today we will start with a game called uh, Factorio. Okay, apparently it is a resource management and automation game with a, a simple graphics component. Uh, let's check out some of the reviews. Spilful Monk looks at some of the reviews for the game and grows disturbed and confused. Uh, <clears throat> um, um, is this a human thing? These reviews are all positive, but uh, all of them say the same thing. The last maybe 200 reviews all say a different iteration of the same thing. Is this a joke, or uh, am I getting into something bad here? Smuffle's screen displays a short scroll of the latest reviews. All of them say something along the lines of, The factory must grow. Well, okay then. I know this game does have mods. Uh, I looked earlier when I tested my game settings and recording software. I'll be ignoring those for now and uh, focusing on the vanilla experience, as what the humans call it, uh, I think, uh, okay, well, let's get started. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, new game, mm -hmm, sandbox, mm -hmm. oh, uh, uh, this looks complicated. Just go with default settings and start. The game screen loads fast and the introduction sequence plays, starting with the sound of explosions and a bleep noise, explaining how to win the game. Victory is achieved by launching a rocket with either a satellite or a player in it. So, uh, from what I can tell here, the... The player, this is this is little guy over here, n needs to build a factory to make rockets to get back into space after crash landing. Uh, okay, how hard can this be? The following hour of gameplay takes place with Spuffle Monk learning the controls of the game, getting used to the graphics, and doing some exploring. Eventually, he actually gets to work, placing his first miner down and putting his first stone smelter next to it. He spends a few minutes clearing boulders and trees in the crash site and slowly accumulates resources, enough to add more miners. Eventually, setting up the first belt line and assembler after the first hour. Right then, that's a good, uh... According to this, I need to do research by making science packs? Uh, okay, uh, I need to automate red science because uh, handcrafting is uh, very slow, um... Very, very slow. Uh, okay, then, um, iron gears and copper plates. Uh, that's easy. I'll just, uh... Another 20 minutes pass by, seemingly a bit too fast as he finishes handcrafting the first 50 red signs, depositing the few of them into a science lab and looking at what research is available. Hmm, automation? That's going first. Uh, I can build assemblers now. Okay, after that, maybe, um... Logistics? Uh, what is this? Belt splitters, underground belts, and inserters. Oh, look! Power generation! That'll be needed. I will start with, um... Two hours pass without Spuffle Monk's notice, as he upgrades and improves, adding production lines to automate the construction of red science packs. Finally, unlocking green science packs. Oh, this gets a lot more complicated. Uh, I need to mix up multiple resources to make these iron, iron gears, copper plates, iron blades, green circuits. Where do I get those? Oh, so, so, so this goes here and, uh, and then that can go. A further 40 minutes pass when Smuffle Monks begins to panic as a red triangle with an exclamation point appears on his screen, indicating his factory is taking damage. What? What? What's that red thing? Is that some kind of a lob? Okay, um, uh, let, let me go, go see what this is then. Spilfer Monk hastily runs towards the noise to find the game's enemies. The bug hives are nervous, attacking the copper mines. What are those things? Ah, stop, stop eating my miners! Oh, God! Oh, God! Where? Do, do, do I have a weapon? Or, oh, I have a gun! Okay, uh... Shoot! 
Spillful Monk fumbles but eventually finds the shoot button, and three of the six aliens chewing his base get killed. He does, however, run out of ammunition for his simple pistol, and the aliens redirect their attention to his character. What? Why isn't this far? You have to matter bullets. This needs bullets. Wait, wait. No! A group of six aliens attack him and kill his character, resulting in a game over screen. The game automatically deletes his save file as the difficulty is set to hard core. <laughs> his channel outro plays. Top comment The factory must grow. Great days and glorious victory. My name is Spiffle Monk, and welcome to my Let's Play. Today we're going to try Factorial out again. Uh, last time didn't go so well, uh, but I have a better knowledge about the game, and one of the first things I know to make is ammunition. I know I'm not alone here this time, so I can prepare for it. Let's play. Game starts with the same settings as the previous time. Spiffle Monk wastes no time and clears the local area of trees and rocks and immediately starts ammunition as quickly as possible. If you're within two hours, he's roughly close to where he was when he got killed last time. Right. I looked more at the research options and found a better gun, better bullets, and automated ammo production. As you can see, it's green science, red science, and as you can see, the first few bits of military science are coming off the assembly line. I was told from the last comments, aside from the crazy chanting, that I need walls, uh, gun turrets, and uh, other things and try to not pick a fight. Spiffle One continues gameplay for a further hour or so before that all-familiar signal blares. The red triangle with the exclamation mark appears. Aha! Now we'll see who's the boss of this factory. Have at thee! Spiffle Monk heads towards the target and encounters a group of eight enemies who he easily deals with. After replacing the destroyed miners, he resumes working and begins to automate oil processing. What is oil in this game? Uh, it's like a bomb oil or something. Uh, do humans use hand-washing agents as industrial machinery? What is oil in this... Hold on, let me see something. Spiffle Monk pauses his game and reads out an article on crude oil and fossil fuel industry. Then a follow-up article on plastic. Plastic and petroleum. Well, that's... Okay, well... We have something similar, but we generally used hydrogen and stuff. Uh, I don't even know if my homeworld has the same, uh, we, we never needed it. We mostly use ceramics and stuff, as well as silicon-based industry, so, uh, we don't have plastics in our industry. Uh, wood and a sort of bitumen substance is the closest that we have to your human coal, and we have no crude oil processing at all, so, uh, no plastic. Uh, is that why human circuitry processes is so cheap? Plastics? Spiffle Monks makes a note to do some research later and carries on with automation. Eventually, about an hour or so after starting to produce plastic bars, the alert sound rings out again and Spiffle Monk charges out to meet the new enemy. Okay, let's go. I am still making bullets and guns, so I should be... Holy crap! Spiffle Monk arrives and is sworn by an army of around three dozen or so enemies and is killed while attempting to run away. Once again, his save is still in hardcore mode, so he dies. A game over screen occurs, and his save is deleted. Fuck! <laughs> game ends, and Spuffle's outro plays as normal. However, it seems as though the audio wasn't properly edited, and a number of seriously bad curse words and slurs can be faintly heard in the background. Top comment. Hardcore mode? I think you should turn it off in your gameplay settings, dude. Hardcore mode is something players of only like maybe eh, 150 hours or more would attempt. In any case, good effort. Build walls, turrets, get secured ASAP next time. Subbed and liked. Great days and glorious victory. My name is Spufflebunk and welcome to my Let's Play. Today, it's going to be Vectorio again. The channel intro plays, and the screen cuts to a factory that seems already built. On the recommendation of some of my subscribers, thank you all by the way, I have turned hardcode mode off and started building walls and defenses. This game looked so stupidly simple, I had no idea just how uh, intricate it really is. So this time, instead of taking you all through the long and boring, I have pre-built my base. And as you can see, I have started producing the first batches of blue science. 
And have you something humans have in real life, apparently? Trains! A quick overview of the base is shown, followed by a short montage of the base's construction. Your blueprint is outlined for later construction that produces purple science and logistics robots, along with a side factory that makes various other things such as belts and assemblers. The factory, however, is a mess made of spaghetti, with obvious bottlenecks and the mismashes of belts. I think I'm getting the hang of this game, okay, so let's go see what we can do. And before you ask, yes, I've already died twice while building this base. One hour or so of gameplay follows, while Spiffle's checking and rechecking his factory, adding bits here and there, putting more belts in, and having a short pseudo-aneurysm while figuring out the intricacies of the blueprint upgrader before finally arriving at his newly built tray. Now, according to the humans and the Factorio guide, trains are a long-term, long-range logistic solution that replaces belts across long distances. Humans apparently had these things for hundreds of years. In real life, uh, well, they still operate today, apparently. You can find a few of these uh, railway networks on Earth and other colonies. Uh, this will be the first time that we use one. I had no idea how to automate this, so I had to watch a guide, so, uh... Uh, don't judge me. So, uh, but let's go. Smilful Monk enters the train and opens the UI to start the automation sequence. The train spools up and then charges around corners at breakneck speeds and arrives at a train stop for the stone mine several miles away from his main base. As instructed in the guide, the train loads up on the stone once full and charges back at blistering speeds back to his main base. He is a little bit too giddy at the result. Why don't we have these? That was amazing! No, seriously, Council of Elders asked the humans if we can borrow some of these trains. This would have solved so many problems back in the day. So many problems. Look at how much this thing can carry. Gameplay stops. Spiffle Monk's outro plays. The next video he releases is a two and a half hour long video essay entitled we need to beg the humans for trains and receive nearly half a billion views. Top comment. Seriously? You guys don't have trains. Uh, I'd love to know how that was actually worked for you guys to get to space or do mass transit. I can recommend a few games if you want. Great days and glorious victory. My name is Spiffermonk and welcome to my Let's Play. Today we are back. Uh, you guessed it. Factorio. Last time was a solid uh, month, I think, in between that episode and my last episode. That was because I was trying out a train for myself. I went to the human colony on Epsilon Ridani nearby, and uh, I tried to train. Best thing ever. Why don't we have those anyway? Um, today on Factorio, it's time for expansion. Spiffle Monk intro plays, and a further overview of the factory is played showing a separated train network with multiple railway sections with up to 30 trains running at once. Further advancements had been made with a series of blueprints laid out and a half completed for the production of yellow signs. As you can see, I did some of off-camera work here. I do read your comments and I would try to make my videos, especially on these games, slightly shorter. And also, I checked the reviews again. I'm starting to understand where you are coming from. Factory must grow from players with upwards of 2,000 hours. With how short-lived human lives are, you'd expect them to not spend 2,000 hours playing a game. Now would you? Sheepishly displays his own time of 134 hours before returning to the game. So today, as far as I can tell from the research queue, is the last day that we'll play as I am not that far away from... Spilfumunk is interrupted by several attack alerts. Noticing on his map that there are several attacks going at once in his front line, Smurfle assumes that all is well and ignores it. A minute later, he starts noticing that copper production has stopped and looks up again at his mining outpost to notice there is a truly massive biter army overwhelming and obliterating everything there. He panics and subsequently dies six times trying to take the biters out. In the ensuing chaos, Spiffle Monk's base is seriously damaged with green circuits and blue circuit factories being destroyed. Part of his ammo production line is cut and four of his trains are destroyed too. The entire north and northeast base of his base is completely destroyed and the equivalent of 12 hours of work lost. 
to the tune of maybe another 30 minutes to an hour of replacing everything the bite is destroyed. That's, uh, that's just plain evil. How am, how am I supposed to beat that? Uh, there were thousands of them. Okay, screw this. I am reloading a save. Smurfle Monk reloads the save and tries again. He redirects his attention to strengthening his defenses, doubling the number of turrets, and strengthening his defensive line. The biters attack again, and this time, Smurfle, barely, very, very barely, makes it out with no major losses. This is insane! Absolutely insane! I... Okay, I get it. I need more guns. The rocket will have to wait, I guess. Uh, so, uh, what do I do? Flamethrower turret? Oh, wh what's a flamethrower? Smurfle Monk looks up the concept, unfortunately clicking on the wrong link, showing what flamethrowers were used for in the Vietnam War and World War II. He has a slight panic attack and ends the video. Top comment, Shave scumming is a legitimate tactic when you are a new guy. Uh, no issues, dude. Bite hard. And flamethrowers, yeah. yeah. Did you know that that's a thing called incendiary bombs? Yeah. That's fun. Milk, great days and glorious victory. My name is Spuffle Monk, and welcome to my Let's Play. Today we are back in Vittorio, and I've sent a special message to the council about uh, flamethrowers. Uh, and yes, they scare me too. So today is more Vittorio. I've done some off-camera work so that we can skip straight to the point. Seventeen hours later, I am starting to understand why some people have upwards of a thousand hours in this game. Why does it seem to... Uh... <laughs> anyway. The channel intro play, then an overview of the factory shown, with a large shot ending with Spiffle Monk standing next to a launch silo for the endgame rocket. It isn't ready for launch yet, but it appears all the components are where they need to be. Okay then, uh, here we go. Spiffle Monk connects the last belt to where it needs to be, and resources begin to flow. He follows the connection to a series of a dozen assemblers, oil refineries, chemical processors, and explains as he goes to tell the viewer what each machine set does. After a few minutes, the first rocket control components have been made, and the progress in the silo goes up. It's a little slow, but well, that's okay. Room to expand and grow. In any case, uh, this should be done shortly. Oh, look at that. Spiffle Monk watches with the depression of a kid in a candy store with an unlimited budget as the animation plays of the rocket emerging from its silo. Well, uh, I assume I enter it and just uh, like the train, I, I, I guess. Spiffle enters and launches the rocket. The end game screen plays and Spiffle earns some steam achievements for the game. Yes! Yes, by the gods! Yes! Finally! I am finished! Oh! How long did it take me to finish my first? A uh, hundred and eighty-four hours! How? How is that possible? This game took so much of my attention. Uh, wow! Oh, so, uh, so I guess mods are, are next. Uh, any suggestions in the comments? Uh, uh, thanks for watching. The channel outro plays as Spuffle stares blankly at the screen, showing his playtime with the game. Top comment. Only 180 hours, dude! Rookie numbers. You should try mods next time. Just the quality of life stuff like, you know, stack sizes and supersonic trains. Uh, then, after you've launched a couple more rockets, go for broke and install the Space Exploration Mod Pack. That, oh, that mod pack is agony. End of story. I would quickly like to thank our tier 5 patrons, Dragzoon WRE, Quantum Wednesday, Ambrose Catull, Lord Ashrakal, Bushmaster177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, and Arcadian. Thank you very much.